I'm gonna show you how to get your exterior caulking looking like this rather than this. The biggest mistake people make with exterior caulking is getting their finger in there and just getting that bead way too thin and spread out. If you do that, it's going to crack and peel away over time. So let me show you how to get professional looking beads here. When it comes to getting the right exterior caulking to use, that can be a difficult choice. There's hundreds of different products out there. I'll make it pretty simple here. There's two products that I always stick to. That is the NP1 Master Seal Polyurethane Sealant and Big Stretch, which is a latex water base. This is much easier to work with, water cleanup. This is mineral spirits and rubbing alcohol. This is a lot more durable and will last a lot longer than this. If you need an easy product to work with, this is a good product. I recommend it over Dynaflex 230, which is very similar. This is better for inside, this is better for outside, this is more stretchy and flexible. So if I have to, I will use this. Most of the time I use the NP1. These products here are also very popular. The thing that I don't like about them is all of them say you're not supposed to tool them, which means you gotta just apply them perfectly, don't touch them. I don't know if you've ever tried caulking, but that never really happens. I even contacted this company and yeah, they recommend no tooling whatsoever. Let's get to the application. There's a few things that you need to have in place before you get rolling. Number one is gonna be paper towel. This is gonna be messy. You want to keep the tip clean, your hands clean, everything clean. Paper towel is your best friend here. You can use rags for sure, but I just like to rip off individual slices here and just get a bunch in your pocket and you're ready to reload at a moment's notice. Next thing you'll need is a utility knife to cut the tip. When we're talking tips here, you wanna have a bit bigger of a tip. I like about 3 16 of an inch. That's gonna give you a good size bead. To cut that, I'll just hold the gun at about 15 degrees and then cut straight down. Then I'll take a black marker, just make a, a line along the furthest point of the tip. That's gonna help you so much to keep the gun orientated in the right way. Whatever direction you're heading, just point that line away from you. This is gonna solve a lot of your problems. If you get that tip sideways or upside down, you're gonna make a huge mess. Once you've got that tip cut, you also need to puncture the seal. Now, most guns do come with these little um, puncture sticks on there. Jab that in there. Make sure you jab it in enough times that you're really gonna break that foil apart. Now, in terms of a caulking gun, an exterior gun is going to be a lot nicer with NP1 Master Seal. If you're using the big stretch, any gun will work because this stuff does not have a lot of viscosity and it's easy to squeeze out. This stuff here is pretty thick. The difference between an interior gun and an exterior gun is just the thrust ratio. This is 18 to 1, 10 to 1. What that means is you're not going to squeeze out as much material with this, but it's going to be a lot easier on the old carpet tunnel forearm here. So this is a beautiful gun. I'll link this one in the description. And then you also need a tooling agent. The six inch jumbo popsicle sticks is the best one that you can do. You can make your own out of wood, of course, but these, you can buy these off Amazon as well, or any craft store is gonna sell these things. The thing here, it has the perfect round profile. It's wide enough that you're not gonna get a lot of squeeze out the side. Then I also like to cut a nice 90 degree on one of the ends here. That is gonna be the perfect tool for any kind of side spillage cleanup. So let's get to the application here. You want to hold your gun approximately at the angle that you cut. If you're going to air, get it a little more on the nose, a little kind of more 90 degrees. If you hold the thing too um, on too much of an angle, it's not gonna stick the caulking to the materials here. So you can see I put it on a little bit less here. You can always just take the gun. The nice thing here with the dripless gun is it keeps it fairly clean. If you get a little bit of uh, build up there, just wipe it off. Go over the thin spot. You wanna have enough material on for the tooling. Now, you've got that on there, doesn't look great. So if you were using the quad here, you're kind of screwed because you can't tool it. All right. That was smooth. So this dry tooling technique is also going to work perfectly well for the big stretch. This is kind of the secret key here. 
is when you're just getting rolling to find out kind of the best angle to hold this thing at, pull it toward yourself and then you're gonna be able to see how much material you're picking up. You want to find that sweet spot where you're getting kind of the perfect pickup. And that's gonna be just so it's barely picking up any material at all, yet still getting a nice profile on both the edges. It's a little bit of trial and error here and it depends on how much material you've laid down in the first place. The nice thing about this MP1 is you can go over it three, four, five times and it's not gonna skin up. If you're gonna paint this stuff, you do have to let it sit for at least one day because it does take quite a while to set up. So let me demonstrate the tooling process here. So start off on a bit of an angle, get a look at how much material you're picking up. If you're picking up too much, tip the angle down a bit. If you're not picking up any, get a little flatter and just ride it right along. You can see about, that's about how much material I have. I'll clean it off in the paper towel. And if we're looking at the bead, it's looking actually really nice all the way along. I did end up getting a little too heavy on the material, so I will need to just clean that off with the straight edge and just ride that along here. That is the perfect bead of caulking. If you're going to be doing this exterior caulking job and you have some old existing caulking that is cracked, it's an absolute mess. You have to remove it. If you want to know the easiest way to get that job done, check out this video right over here. Uh, jumbo popsicle. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> just going on and on and on. That's just going to keep you help. That's just going to, what the, what?